Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to the second episode of our space shooter tutorial on Pixel Pad. Last class we coded the spaceship, it can move now for the four directions, up, right, down and left. And it also has a speed variable that we can easily change our spaceship speed. For example, I can change for 25 now, stop and play my game again and my spaceship just moves way faster. And in this episode, let me just change this back to 5. In this episode, we're going to start coding the enemies and collisions with the enemies and how can we uh, destroy the enemies. So first, we're going to need a new sprite to be our enemy, right? Like we got our player sprite last class. So here on sprites, I'll go click on the plus button. And this is the asset store. And on the asset store, I will look for my enemy sprite, any, any sprite that I want that I can use to be my enemy, right? So I'll go navigating here, next, next. I'll look for a sprite to be my enemy. I kind of like this flyman. So I think I'll go with it. I'll just uh, select it and then select asset, this button down here. And when I press it, it will ask me what's the name of this texture of this sprite. And the name of this sprite will be enemy because that's what this flyman is gonna be. So I press OK, and now I have my enemy sprite loaded here on Pixelpad for us. So now let me try pressing play. Well, I still don't have my enemy inside my game, right? So what is missing? If you remember from last class, we created this class player here, right? And then later inside the game class, we did game.player. So the player inside my game will be a new object from the player class. That's what we're saying here on this line. And then later we give this player a sprite by saying game.player.sprite equals new sprite from the image player.png. That's how we, we added our spaceship in the game, right? So we have to do the same to add our enemy. But first we need a class to our enemy, like we have a class to the player, right? So here on classes, I will click on this plus button and I'll add a new class and I'll call this class enemy because that's gonna be my enemy. And remember for the classes, we always start with the uppercase letter, right? So enemy uppercase E, press okay. And now I have my enemy class there. Now I can do basically the same as I did with the player here, game.player equals new object player to create a new object inside my game from the class player, right? But we are gonna use the class enemy now. So after this line uh, that I set the speed of my player to five, I can say down here game dot enemy. Now I'm creating my enemy. So the enemy inside my game will be a new object from the class enemy like that. So when I stop and play my game now, I can see a blue square in the middle of my game, right? And that's my enemy class, but my enemy class still doesn't have a sprite. If you remember from last week, that also happened to our player because our player didn't have a sprite. So how did we solve this problem? Using this second line here, we said that the sprite of my player inside the game is a new sprite from this image uh, called player.png. So we have to do the same for the enemy not the same, same. We're gonna change some letters over there, right? Some words. So I can say here that my game.enemy.sprite, so the sprite of my enemy inside the game, like we're doing, like we did with the player, right? Will be now a new sprite using the image enemy.png. So now my enemy will have a sprite that is a new sprite from the image enemy.png that we added earlier, right? Now if I press stop and play, I have my enemy inside the game. But you can see that my enemy is pretty big actually. It's way bigger than my spaceship. And I don't really like that. I want to make my enemy a little bit smaller so how can I reduce my enemy size? Any image in our game has its scale, 
right? But the scale is divided in two. Can you guess? Yes. The scale Y, scale Y, and scale X. And by default, it doesn't matter the size of your image, the scale X will always be one and the scale Y also will always be one. But we can change these numbers. So let's say that I want my image to be half of the size, like this, right? This will be my new image. What should be the scale X and the scale Y? Well, we can see here, let's start with the X, that half of the image is half of my scale X. So my scale X should not be one. If I want my image to be half of the size, my scale X should be 0 0.5, half of one, right? And the same applies to the Y. You can see here that it's exactly half of the scale Y. So the scale Y should also not be one, but 0 0.5. So if I want my image to be half of the size, I decrease this value here, right? The one to 0 0.5. If I want my image to be the double of the size, I just have to increase this value. So instead of being one, this would be two. Two is double of one, right? So this would be the double of the size as 0 0.5 is half of one. So this is half of the size. Okay, so let's go back to pixel pad now. And here now, how can I change my enemy scale X and scale Y? So I can just say pretty simple here that my game dot enemy dot scale X will be now how much we want? 0 0.5. I want it to be half of the size, so 0 0.5. 0 0.5. And for the Y, actually, let's just try with the X. Let's see how it looks like if we change just, just the X. So if I play, you can see that now my image, my enemy, is half of the scale in the X axis, but still the same scale on the Y axis. So it looks uh, stretched, right? It looks weird. So we also have to change the game dot enemy dot scale y to 0 0.5. And now I have an image uh, that was rescaled to half of the size. I think this is a good size for my enemy compared to the spaceship. So I'll leave it like that. Okay, so now I have my enemy and the game in the size that I want. So I want now to make my enemy start working properly, right? And the first thing I want to do is to change my enemy's position when I start the game. You can see that when I press play, not just my enemy, but my player as well. When I press play, both of them are created in the same position, right? And if you remember from last class, the player and the enemy are being created in the position 0, 0, right? Because everything that we create inside the game, if you don't give a position to it, it's created on the position 0, 0. In the last video, we also saw that if I want to bring my player down, I have to decrease its Y position, right? And if I want to bring it up, I have to increase its Y position. So here in our game, I want to bring my player down, but I want to bring my enemy up. So if I have to decrease the position of my player, I have to increase the position of my enemy. I mean the Y position, right? Not the X, because we are moving up and down. So how can I do that? If you remember from last uh, class, we move the player by changing his positions, right? Game.player.x, game.player.y. That's how we move the player. And we can do the same, but now on the start tab, because we want to move it just once, right? So what I'm going to do here is here on the line three between these two codes for the player, I can say game.player.y will be equals 
So we know that the player is created on zero, right? The position zero, zero, so the Y is zero. If I have to decrease the player's position to bring it down, what is smaller than zero? A negative number, right? So I can say, for example, negative 100, let's say. So if I stop my game now and play, you can see that my player starts a little bit uh, below the, the last time I pressed play, right? So now what I want to do, actually I want to bring my player more down, like to 250, like that. Yeah, I think that looks better. And I also want to bring my enemy up, right? So after I set the scale to my enemy, I can just do the same as I did with my player. So game.enemy.y equals, and again, it starts on zero. If I want to bring it up from last class, remember, I have to increase the y axis. So I have to increase zero. What is bigger than zero? Any other number, right? Like 50 or 100 or 5,000. <laughs> but okay, let's use 5,000. Let's see what happens. Play. Oh, my enemy disappeared. Of course, 5,000 is way farther up on the screen, right? So my, my enemy is like outside of the game screen. So it's not that my player disappeared. It's just too far from the game screen. So let's not use a huge number like that. I'll use the same number as I used to my player, but instead of negative, I'll use positive. So then when I press play, they are placed on the same position, but on different parts of the screen, right? One is placed on the top and one is placed on the bottom. And nice, now our game looks more like a space shooter game, but we have to make this enemy alive. Our enemy has to, to do something, right? Even if we touch the enemy now, nothing happens to us. So let's start coding our enemy's movement. How can we do that? So to code our enemy's movement, like we did with the player, we're gonna do it on the loop tab because we want it to keep happening again and again and again, right? Like change the position of my enemy and then change the position of my enemy again and then again and again, like we do with the player, right? If we keep pressing the D key, for example, this code here will keep running and changing the position of my player. But for the enemy, let me give here some space from the uh, player's code. For the enemy, it doesn't depend on any key to move. It, it's not being controlled by anyone. So we don't have to uh, use if keys pressed. We just have to move the enemy. Because once the enemy is placed inside the game, what it has to do is move down it will always move down and that's what it's gonna do, right? So how can we move the enemy down? Well, how can we move the player down? Let's see here, if keys pressed S, okay, this part here we can skip because we don't need to check for keys to move the enemy down. Uh, the game.player Y equals game.player Y minus game.player speed. Nice. So we know that to move my enemy, I have to say game.enemy.y, right, the same thing here, equals game.enemy.y minus game.player.speed. Okay, so I need a number for the speed of my enemy. I could use 5 here, but instead what I'll do, I'll create a speed variable for my enemy as well like I did with my players. Let's go back on the start tab and I'll do basically the same as I did with my player. So we are repeating the same code again, but instead of player, it's game.enemy.speed equals. And for my enemy speed, I don't want my enemy to move faster than my player. So I use two for my enemy speed. Let's see how it looks like. Let's go back on the loop tab and now game.enemy.y equals game.enemy.y minus game.enemy.speed. So move my enemy on the y position with my enemy speed, right? Let's see if that works. Play, oh yeah, the enemy is moving down. Very cool. So again, if I press play, my enemy moves down forever and ever and keep moving down, right? That's what we coded. Again, enemy.y equals game enemy y 
minus enemy speed y minus go down right but for now we cannot yet collide with the enemy or we cannot shoot anything at the enemy so we cannot destroy the enemy but that's what we're gonna start doing next class next video okay so that's it for today next video we're gonna start coding collisions with the enemy and creating our bullets to fin to start destroying our enemies okay so see you next video bye